Today I am here at Cooper's Stadium, which is the home of Adelaide United Soccer Club. I was going to say football club, but we are in Australia. I actually have the pleasure of talking to Jamie Wood, who is the principal million dollar agent, rising chairman's elite agent at Ray White, Barossa Valley and Two Wells. Jamie, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you very much. How many years have you been in real estate now? Going to, since 2018. 18, so okay. So what's that, five years? Yeah, right, Coming up six. six. Yep. What were you doing before real estate? Bricklayer. From, from about 16, I think I left school year 10, I reckon. Um, was a bricklayer with my dad for a long time. I think about maybe when we were, I think I was three years into bricklaying, then we broke away and, and did our own little thing, dad and I, until dad sort of stepped away. And then I carried the business for, till I was about 28, I reckon, yeah. 29 before I sold it. Now, I remember meeting you when you were making that transition, but just talk about the reason, because it was a successful business. You were the boss, you had people who reported to you, really good at what you did, but why did you decide to make that change? Um, well, two things. I think I always wanted to, I was always wanting to make a change. I don't do real well with the same thing for long, long periods of time. Um, I had a great bunch of lads that worked with me, I had family that worked with me as well inside of that business. Um, two things, I didn't want to um, work in that industry as long as my dad did, because mm. I saw the effects that it had on him. On the, on the physical body. Yeah and, yeah, and mental too, like, yeah. like all of those types of things. Um, and then I, I had a, a bit of a health scare, I think in 2018, which kind of sped that decision up. So, and yeah. I had a really good, like my brother-in-law at the time was, was up and coming and wanted to do his thing. So it was a good time to sort of transition the business across. And, and so why real estate? You could have done lots of things. Fell into it. I'm being yeah. really honest. Um, you knew Darren, he was... I did know Darren. Darren yeah. had, so Darren, who is my, um, he's a principal at, at the office with us as well. So um, he started the office. He sold my places or a couple of my homes, I think, um, during my, when I was a bricklayer. So during my time before real estate and kept in touch. You know, that's, you know, and that mm. was it really. We, he appraised my home as I was selling the business and yep. we got to chatting and... He was recruiting. I guess so, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, one of the things that I do remember about that early conversation that we had was that you, from the second that you stepped into real estate, you were seeing it as a business opportunity. Like it wasn't a job. It wasn't about listing and selling. Like you took that business mindset that you had and you saw the opportunity with real estate. What were the de early decisions you think that you made that were maybe different to what you see other agents doing? Um Prior to getting on board with Darren, I had spoken to a, like a relatively large number of other agents, um, even principals. I, um, I knew Darren quite well. I, I had, from my previous business, going through um, different leadership roles and, and having different employees in that, like what I'd probably realised and made some mistakes in my previous business was like pers personnel was key, mm. working with the right people. Um, and, and like I, I still stand by, I made the, the right decision in Darren. Like he, he felt like the right fit. I, he, he was always very aware that. I would go into business at some point. So I don't yep. think that was ever a surprise for him. Um, we get along really, really well. And that's why we've continued to now stay business partners rather than go separate ways and things like that. So yep. I think personnel was the, that was my decision to be, right be around the right people. Yeah. yeah, amazing. Okay. So just talk to everyone. We A lot of people listening will know about the Barossa Valley wine region, but yep. talk about it in terms of a marketplace. It's sort of like a kind of really regional yeah. part of South yep. Australia. I didn't know a lot about it when I first got in. Um, yep. I sort of just followed Darren, so he probably had a bit more of an understanding of where he was going with it. I was just going with the guy. Yeah, um, I was, I was again personnel, not so much area. As far as it is regional, um, it feels closer to residential than regional, if I'm being honest. Yeah. But it is a regional area. It does have a, a, a large mixture of acreages, wineries, businesses, and homes. Yeah. Uh, it was slow turnover. Like what I'm realising now, it was slow turnover. Long days on market before you know, um, like when we first entered into the mm. Barossa Valley, there was. And, and one thing that we probably underestimated was it was one agency heavy, yeah. uh, one, one agency heavy, which has proven a longer to get to, to pull them back rather than compete mm. against four or five that have a small market share. There was one big beast that had a lot of market share. So yep. it's been a long journey for us and we continue to sort of chip away at that. And the Barossa is a collection of towns, right? It's not, there's not a town called Barossa Valley. So I take your office is in Lindock, yep. but you, you cover off on you know, half a dozen, maybe 10 towns yeah, in that region. Yeah. yeah, three three main towns, I would say, three or four big ones, and then, yeah. yeah, seven, eight smaller towns. And so there's lots of different property styles, residential acreage, wineries, rural property. Um, what's your median sale price? 
580,000. Yeah, I think okay. it was the last How time I checked. How much has that grown since you've been in the... Uh, well, it used to be for through the fours, early 400s, I think. Yeah, okay. So. So quite a two hundred thousand dollar increase, yeah, just wow. about or just under. Huge, yeah. And it's mostly families. You're selling to families right. living in the area, okay? Not many investors. Uh, since COVID, yep, a lot more investors. Yep. Um, I, I couldn't tell you the percentages, but it, it, that's significantly increased. Yeah. So tight market, relatively low sale price. So there was a few barriers, yeah. and you guys have taken a very traditional data model approach to the way you've grown your business. So do you want to talk about those early days, the things that you would do day in day out? day out to build your growing business darren was very big on the phones just calling everybody you could possibly so he, he drove that really early um, yeah. and not knowing anything about real estate you know just again lucky right personnel followed what he said and it, it, it yeah. worked um the only thing I, probably, I think we would probably change is we didn't have a, a hyper focus on specific areas yeah and um, we were very spread for a, for a small office not not sort of knowing the benefits of Hyper focusing in on, on one area per agent potentially. Yep. Um, so we've had a slow change over the last two or three years to, to try and fix that. So I'm relatively good at that now, but there's still work to be done. But that was that was our main focus. It was just getting everyone's details, you know, yep. names, numbers. So it's a slow process, but it's, it pays dividends. So a typical day for you, like in the if you think about those early months, what would a typical day look like for you? What time would you get in? How many phone calls would you make? How many hours were you on the phone? Um, we'd be in at 8.30. When we very first started, it was just Darren and I and Isaiah inside the office. So yeah. we'd be in at 8.30. There'd be generally, for me, just cold calls, to be honest, to yeah. probably midday. So it might have been four or five hours of so cold calls. So calling off Price Finder? Yep. Yep. Um, and any list that Darren had given us at the time, because um, he obviously had an area that he was working prior to moving to the Barossa Valley. So yeah. we were still washing through a lot of that data as well. Um, that was, to be honest, that was really it. And then it was yep. shadowing Darren at appointments and, and yep. things like that. So yep. five hours on the cold calls is enough. Yeah, five hours of cold calls. <laughs> yeah. and, and you'd be building, like how many homeowners would you speak to in a, you may not remember, yeah. but how many homeowners would you be adding to your database on a typical day back then? I couldn't tell you the numbers, um, but we would, it would, it, you would probably make between 50 and 100 calls in that yeah, day, wow. depending on how many you hit. Yep. You know, sometimes you'd have days where the conversations were longer, you'd hit less. Yeah. I think you'd dial 100 numbers. Yeah. Like, quite easily, I would yeah. think. So jumping forward a bit, something that's remarkable about you is that you have, now correct me if I'm wrong, but you've listed very near on 100% auction stock for the entirety of your nearly six year career. Yeah, that is correct. Uh, one, one has gone to market now, that was an auction. Okay, right. Technically it was listed as an auction. Right, um, but, yeah. but you didn't go that route. So this is, you're new to the industry, it's mum and dad, bread and butter, Mortgage belt, really, mm -hmm. and it's not an auction area. Wasn't, yep. Wasn't, yeah, sorry, you've changed it now. Yep. But no, no one else, you, that no, incumbent no. was not doing auctions. So why did you do that? Why did you take that pathway? It, 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 I didn't do anything, to be honest. Um, two things, Darren was very free in, um, it wasn't set in his ways that you had to run certain things. He was very open um, to, for me running auctions. He was quite auction orientated himself before he left his previous company. Yep. It, it was just data driven. It wasn't anything magic, to be honest. It was mainly Ray White people like you. So I remember sitting and I, we only just spoke, Darren and I, at um, at a Melbourne conference a few weeks back. And, and I said, one of the things that stood out to me was there was a lot of like, when you talk to other agents in other areas, there was a lot of I feels and I don't likes and um, I don't think so. And he mm. never did it. And mm. John o said it's rubbish. Um, um, but there was no real factual basis behind any of their like why they did or didn't run auctions and yet yeah. when you would go to you know the, the college and things like that and meet people like yourself and I remember having really long in-depth conversation with Brett Rowan felt he's very passionate you know mm. John Morris and you would go through the data and as far as I could see back it, it had never it just made sense it, it never actually performed worse than any of the other methods yeah so moving forward my whole thing was if I'm going to spend time selling properties I want to spend it in the highest percentage that I possibly could. Not saying yep. it's right or wrong to run either. Yeah. Because um, I have met some agents that run really strong, you know, private treaty campaigns. Yeah. But I think from a business model, when you're talking about like overall, especially when you don't know anything different, it's just follow the percentages. Um, yeah. And that's proven dividends for us. And so how would you have those conversations with the vendors? Like you're new to the industry, you have no track record, you don't really know the area, you've got no sales. <laughs> And you're going in and, and pitching something that no one else is talking about. So how did you overcome? Because you would have had a lot of 
Fear? Yep. How did you overcome that? I was brutally honest at the table. I would let people know that I was starting. Um, yeah. People either liked that or they didn't. Yeah. But I was very careful to put that in at the end of the presentation. Yeah. I, I found that unfortunately real estate is a real 80-20 business. Like 20% yeah. of the agents are doing an amazing job and understand it. Yeah. I found 80% of them still, I could talk to people at 15 years in and I got the feeling they still didn't understand it. Um, and I, I think once you, if you really dive in and you spend a, I don't know, hours and hours a day just learning mm. what real estate is, what the statistics are, what people are doing, and you spend an hour with an owner talking about that, you can have a really experienced agent come in before you and you will seem more experienced than them yeah. um, just by actually, it, it's not just a turn up and, and put it on the market, hope you sell type business. Yeah. I think there is a there is a yeah. genuine science behind it yeah. or close enough to. Yeah. Most of them didn't know it. So by the time it got to the point where I would say, look, by the way, I wanted to let you know you are my first sale or my second sale. <laughs> I, I think I did that right up until my 30th. Really? I would let them know you're now my 30th sale. So I haven't had the experience that these guys have had. However, um, but they weren't too fussed at that end of that. A lot of the yeah. times I, I always made sure I was the last one in. Yeah. So I wasn't the first one. That was one of the things that I did really early on, or at least tried to. Yeah. Um, and I think a lot of the times I was almost in by default as yeah, potentially right. they hadn't done enough. So yeah, wow. people aren't silly either. You know, if you yeah. talk percentages, you don't have to tell them about the sales that you had and the sales. You can just go, these are the, they're not the my facts. facts. These are the facts. Yeah. Um, and if no one else offers that to them, yeah. they will go through you yeah. purely through trust and not experience at that stage. Prob and like you say, probably none of your competition even brought up auction, let alone could competently explain what it meant and what the implications were for them in their sales. Yep. So you laid it out as a choice. Yep. You have a choice. You can do this or you can do that. Yep. And they would go with the compelling always. argument. And yeah. So people always find it really funny. They say, you know, how do you push auctions? I get a lot of pushback. I've never once pushed it. Never once pushed it. In fact, I sometimes I don't mention it. I Like I'll wait for them to ask. Yeah, right. You know, what about auctions? It's okay. We can talk about that too. So, so you mentioned that uh, when I said Barossa Valley isn't an auction market, you said it wasn't an auction market. So what yourself and Darren and the team, mm -hmm. you have changed the marketplace yeah so what does that look like now how many properties are going to sale um auction? so well the, i think we're still doing about 96 percent of the auctions in the barossa valley so there's not a lot yeah. outside of our office yeah. all right um they they we generally find there's there are a few of them running them now because they're getting asked to run mm. them not not so much because they want to i don't think so yeah. predominantly if there's an auctions it's ours yeah it is a great point of difference for us to be really yeah. honest. We're, we're you know taking five or six years we're finally now getting calls in if someone wants to run an auction they want to talk about it yeah. um, we find that that's our call into the door yeah we've never had unfortunately great street presence from where our office is located so we don't have that generic you know passer by or you know yeah. foot traffic so to speak so um You've had to generate it all. Generally. And, and the auctions have been a good opportunity to create a bit of a spectacle in your suburb. They have been. I mean, yeah, they have been. I mean, we're all, obviously all online and in room now, but yeah. they were, to start off with, they weren't a spectacle because, yeah. I mean, we were listing, you know, if we listed 100 auctions, we might have sold 20 yeah. um, out the front of houses and 80 wouldn't have bidders. So it, yeah. it was a hard grind you know, in, in the early stages. So online and in room, is that why? Because it allows you to kind of make it look... It's two reasons. I'm not exactly sure why. Maybe it's the convenience. We're finding that we're having more bidders now, all yeah, right, right, since going in, online. online and in-room. I think it's yeah. more convenient and easier. Yeah. Um, it, we're very honest with our owners. It buys us time. If we have time, we can do more work for you too. We're not driving from house to house. And, and as an office, I think we will be on track to do close to 300 um, wow. this year. So like that's a, it, it's three hours per auction on site. Yeah. It's a long time. It is. Um, so it's more convenient for the owners, more convenient for us. We can scale now a lot yeah. more. Yeah, you can control Sorry. it's because it's something, you know, we've seen with a number of our businesses, particularly there's a lot of businesses in, in Queensland who have chosen to do that online in room and it's a control, but they all say the same thing about the number of bidders because it is, it's if easy. I can sit at home, I'm cooking dinner, I've got the kids and I can register to bid on auction, it's much more likely I'll do that than actually have to physically be at a correct. property. Correct, yeah, correct. Um, so no doubt it's better for the buyers. And I just want to talk about the buyers for a minute. One of the other things that we'll often hear particularly in demographics that mm. you tr similar to the ones that you transact in where it's right in the middle of that sort of where everybody wants to buy at that price range everyone's got a mortgage no one's got the money under the ba under the bed yep. the challenge can be sometimes with the brokers and the banks and and mm. and potential buyers being given advice don't go to auction yep. how did you overcome that it's still a work in progress we still have that um 
but but they, they I mean that generating offers before is that's the greatest thing if they don't want to they're they're perfect for an offer before auction um, yeah it takes more time I mean our agents we, we spend a lot of time um, back and forth with them there's a, there's a lot in the talk and, and the under, same thing education around mm. how to get them ready for auction I think even sometimes we come across a lot of brokers that don't understand it yeah um, and try to deter their, their their guys from auction the more auctions we run there the easier it's becoming for us to get yeah. more bidders because they kind of have to yeah um, so that that does help as well but we I mean some of them will sell prior yeah you know so there's no issues there I mean we used to get a lot of pushback I mean I think some agents still think it, it's cash buyers only for an auction campaign yeah when we talk about the success rate it, it's the auction campaign works we're not honed in on it having to sell auction day it's almost like an added bonus if you do, but some of ours were contract prior or, or post. Well, when you spoke about when you entered the market, days on market were horrendous. horrendous. So what, like, what are we talking? 150. It was a, in excess of 100. Yeah. It was the average days on market. So, you know, that's that's a, an efficiency factor of you're turning three houses a year, yeah. effectively, yeah. Um, depending on how many you can hold at a time. So yeah. it was significantly reduced. So for you, it was really about we have to do something to marshal the buyers and get them to make a decision rather than just kind of sit there passively and to give the owners an option yeah like 100 days on market isn't an option for any for, not for them and not for us as yeah. a business um, yeah so that that was one of our big things being able to get stock in get stock out mm. you know um and again i don't think property should be sitting on the market mm. for you having i was very big on you having hired professionals into the home and then they're sitting there setting you up for hey you might be on the market for 120 days how does it take that long to yeah. find out it, it never should yeah um, yeah and so that i mean i imagine that that because your days on market would have been less than half by going through the process like you say even though you were having at the time when we first started it was a third wow yeah. wow so yeah not 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 necessarily selling on the day mm -hmm. but processing the stock that would have then become a, a huge point of difference it was yeah a, a positive target in the marketplace mm -hmm. and then that's helped you yep along with um, all the other things that you're doing. Something else about you that, um, and, and you're obviously really confident, you have great self-belief. It's based on doing the research, doing the work, learning the facts, but you're also really great at holding your fee. So just put it into the context for me of what competition you're going up against, like what fees, how much lower than you are your competition going in? Um. I, it's all anecdote. I don't see the, the fee. We get we get spoken to a little bit about it. It's never really been a, an issue, to be mm. honest. Um, I'm very big and I think a lot of agents uh, have the fee conversation at the wrong time. Yeah. All right. Um, they cut their fee and therefore their enthusiasm at, at the dinner table as opposed to, I've got no problems with someone asking about fee if it's at the end of the transaction. Yeah. Okay. Depending on the work that's been done. That's been a really big key factor in holding the fee. Okay. Yeah. Have the, let's not have it now. Let's have it you know, um, at, at the end. So, but I also think it comes down to the, it, it's that initial conversation around if the guy, if, if they feel that you know what you're talking about, the fee rarely comes up. Yeah. That, that's probably my. So why do you think, because, you know, we hear it all the time, especially in my role, I hear, you know, I lost it over fee. Mm -hmm. They told me I was too expensive. What, what's your attitude to that? Because you're saying you're not losing them over fee. No, never. No, never. No, and, and I, that's, it's a mindset thing. We, we're very, um, we're competitively harsh on our agents inside. Like we're very, we try to teach them to be very introspective. If it's lost, it's never the fee. Yeah. Like it, it's just, it's an opportunity to sort of work on what you were doing wrong potentially. Yeah. Um, I suppose to the, the point that you were making before, there's, there's lots of agents who've been in the market for a lot longer than you, but they have never built the skill to demonstrate that they really understand mm -hmm. how to help the seller yeah. go through this really high stress time Correct. and you guys have proven it because you've you've come in you've moved the stock in a third of the time or less mm -hmm. um and and then you're able to then demonstrate that at the kitchen table so it comes down to preparation is probably what you're saying that is the thing it yeah is. no one likes cheap stuff yeah you know yeah, it's that, true. that's the ultimate like we all yeah. try to save a dollar but it's not um no one really enjoys cheap stuff so if they they don't feel there's a point of difference yeah then they'll, they'll want the cheaper version um, yeah so it's just about getting in there and, and making sure that you're you're not the same, I guess. Yeah, so demonstrate. And I think that's a really interesting point that you make. I think sometimes agents don't understand that the service that we provide is a premium service. Paramount to the result. Yeah. It really is. You know? And I think some agents just generally lack the confidence of whether they actually do make a difference. Yeah. And that, that resonates. They may not, you can see that a mile away when you're at the table. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's not fee. You're not losing them over fee. And so you're, you're saving the fee conversation to the back end of the, you're trying to get them to sign with you before the fee conversation has even come up. Mm -hmm. 
And does that happen? Are you getting out paperwork and? Most of the time. Yeah. Most of the time. Same thing with your marketing yep. schedule? Yep. Great. Where do I sign? Yep. They're in. They just yep. want to get the job done. Correct. That's amazing. Did it take you long to work that out or that was just? Yeah, probably. Um, yes, it did. It, it's, I think you always know it. It, 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 it clicks. I couldn't tell you when it clicks. It clicks at some point and you just go like, it's not, it's nothing to do with that. Mm. Um, the end result is what they're actually concerned about. Like, yep. well, what's the price I'm going to get and am I going to be able to sell? Um, we're very big too. I think a lot of agents don't talk about the second part of the transaction when they're, when they're selling the property. They, they're obviously going somewhere and mm. there's a negotiation to be had that in too. And we're really focusing on wanting that business, not saying, hey guys, but also utilise me at the other end. You yeah. know, um, it's not just about making money on your property. Like how can I help you save on your purchase? Because that's how I cost nothing. That? Always. Yeah, okay. Always. Yep. So you're then their real estate agent. Correct. Yeah, great. For everything, buying, selling, renting, yeah. all of it. Yeah. Yeah. And you're getting more and more repeat and referral business, yeah. I would imagine. Yep. One of the other early conversations that we had was I remember as you were kind of making your mind up about if this is the right industry for you, is you you quickly identify that there's a lot of tasks and that you're going to need help. So you kind of came into it knowing you were going to build a team. How long did it take you before you brought Connor? into your business? Too long, should have brought him on earlier. Um, we're still learning that. That's that's probably an area I'm not great at is, is delegating which tasks are correct. So we yeah. chop and change a lot. I'm very fortunate that Connor's a very understanding, you know, an adaptable human. So he's been paramount to the team, to be honest, um, and underrated, I think. But we work on that all the time. And I actually think that's probably, you know, why we um, have been fortunate enough to, in, to increase on our business most years is because mm. we're, not, we're not too stuck in our ways. If something else works, we will change quite quickly. Yeah. Um, and you have to be in Ray White because they are very fast moving. <laughs> so <laughs> in there, um, so like the innovation of tech and, and the introduction into that, into our business and, and then building the team. We work on it all the time. We're not great at it, so I don't yeah. pretend to be. Um, but we refine all the time. So it does get better, you know, but week how, on week. Month how many month. months were you an agent before... You Connor? took on a, yeah. Um, it, I, I did a full year, I think, or thereabouts. I did about eight, nine months of selling on my own away yep. from Darren, um, yep. not working on his on, on his projects as well. And then we brought Connor on. Yeah. So. Um, and so you would have done it sooner. How much sooner do you think you should have done it? We talk about this all the time. I don't, yes, knowing what I know now, I'd do it sooner. Yeah. I don't know that you can do it. I think it, it happens when it happens. Yeah. Um, we, we talk about it all the time. I, I speak to agents and, and they get asked the question, what would you do differently? Go, I'd hire someone straight away. Mm. But you wouldn't know what you knew now either. So yeah. I sometimes wonder whether you would um, potentially teach them the right things. You're still kind of learning yourself. That was my biggest struggle was yeah. I didn't feel that I was amazingly competent or as competent as I would have liked to have been yeah. when I was trying to teach someone else. And that yeah. was a concern to me throughout that yeah. those early period. It works out. Um, yeah. Get the right people again and, and Connor was the right fit. But... Yes, now if I change, I'd hire two people straight away, mm. but I know different things now right. than I knew then. So Hindsight is twenty twenty. Yeah. And Connor's still in your team. Mm -hmm. So you have not, you've not lost him, which is really lucky. very unusual. Yeah, lucky. To, right. yeah. So why do you think that's worked so well? Um, he's very, uh, he enjoys his role. He's quite good at it. I mean, remuneration is yeah. a big thing. Yeah. If they're remunerated correctly, um, we don't, we're, we're not big on... We don't like to churn them in and churn them out, yep. you know, and force them to do things they're not comfortable or ready to do. And a lot of the times I think potentially sales associates might make that move too early based on money, their remuneration. Yeah. So we do try and remunerate as, as highly and strongly as we can. I was having this conversation with a business owner yesterday, actually. They were saying that the, the, the biggest challenge they have is helping associates understand that the longer they're in the team, the better it is ultimately for their career. Mm -hmm. Like, do you think it's just about money or do you think the recognition piece is because, you know, some people, it's really important to be on the stage course, yeah, and to have the accolades. Yep. Um, yeah, it is. I, I, remuneration's huge. People will, they will forego the accolades if, if the remuneration's right. Yeah. Um, but it is important. Like it is, it's a very competitive, it's a very funny industry. It was nothing like I thought it was getting in. It's mm. very, very, everything's on show um, all the time. It's very, it's hyper competitive, not only your own office, but you know, outside of your own mm. office and competing offices and all those types of things. So I think remuneration's number one. The accolades are closely behind. Yeah, they are. They are yeah. very important. I want, you know, they, yeah. they, it's nice to be recognized for your work as, yeah. as much as people say, I don't care about it. It is a nice thing to be, otherwise we wouldn't do it. Yeah. Um, but I think that number one remuneration is definitely key. Yeah. I, I think there are, you know, I talk to a lot of associates all the time. They want to know what the pay structure is like, how come they're around so long. And I think a lot of the times there's, they're undervalued potentially. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
And I think also the what I've seen from yourself and Darren is you don't seem to have unrealistic expectations of the people in your team either. Like you understand that people have got lives, they've mm-hmm. got families, they're, you know, how do you get that balance right of what's reasonable to expect from someone? Um, we've, we change on this all the time too. We've made mistakes, Darren and I, probably by expecting everyone to run at the fastest person's pace. So... We are quite like one of the things we're working on now as a business is is trying to work out what goals they want and then setting the, you know, the KPIs, I, I guess, around that so that we're not burning people that don't want to be, not everyone wants to write a million bucks and yeah. and, and do the hours and what comes with that. And, and not everyone wants to just write $200,000 and then go home. So yeah. we do try and build it and pop them into the teams. It doesn't always work, you know, because um, yeah. people's goals and things change, but we do try and make sure that it's built around what they would. We have goal settings every year yeah. for the, with everyone from the PM through to admin and, and everyone. So we can, that helps us to get an idea of what they're after. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's still a working process, yeah. but we're getting better at that. And how many people in your team now, like your selling team? Uh, three, three if you include the admin. Yeah. Yep. Um, so we have a campaign manager, Mel. She's been absolutely amazing. So we, we're very glad to have her on board now. Mm-hmm. So keeps us all in check. So yep. um, we've had Reese come into my team for parts of this year as he was building his database. Mm-hmm. We're, we're kind of trying to get away from the, throw them into the fire with the retainer model. So he's been able to build a really strong database without having the fear of the retainer getting behind. He's just stepped out. So all in and out in one year, he was in my team wow. helping and then out with his database. So amazing. Yeah, he's, he's done a really good job. So it's back to me and Connor now. Yeah, okay. And will you look to top that team? Yeah. Yep. Because the, the business has it grown now. To, yeah. How many transactions yeah. will the business do, your business do? Uh, 125, give so or take. It's, it's a it's a lot for yeah, three people is. to do. Yeah. It's yep. definitely, averages 25 deals per head in our network. So okay. it's certainly punching above that. Yep. Um, and then... You transitioned into partnership with Darren. When did that happen? It'll be two years this June. Yeah, wow. Yeah. And that you said, like, you were very clear with Darren from the get-go that you will be a business owner at some point. Or hope to be. Yeah. Well, hoped, had hoped to be. That was your yeah. ambition. Yep. yep. Um, and so how did that transition go for you? Because it's obviously, it's, it's a lot selling 100 plus transactions a year, mm-hmm. building a team, still really learning the industry. Um, and then taking that extra responsibility, how do you, is that just something that's always been within you? You'd... Oh, I, I've, I've got a lot of support from Darren. Yeah. Like it's probably not enough goes to, to towards the, you know, the assistance that he's given. He still takes on a good brunt of the principal, you know, day-to-day yeah. jobs and bits and pieces. So yeah. we are working out ways to offload that a little. And because and, at the time I'd come in, the like our little our mini business was too big at the time for us anyway, you know, um, for me to be able to t- leave too much. Um, yep. So, uh, so we, we, we do delegate different roles inside that, um, but he would he still looks after more of that than I do. Yeah, he's I, more operations and you're leading from the front, yep. sh- setting a good example for your team and the broader team. Yep. And the office, you said it was the three of you when you started. How many in the business I think now? we're eight. eight where we'll be 20 by the end of the month. Wow. Yeah. So. Wow. And, and property management has grown. It's, Correct. It's yep. Still in the one site. Still on the one site, just. We do have a couple of exercises now. We're just waiting on council and bits and pieces. So Exciting. We will expand. So. Yeah, wow, mm. Jamie. Um, a couple of questions I have to you just in closing. So if, um, if someone came to you and knocked on the door and said, Jamie, I want to come and work in your business, I want to get into real estate, what, what advice would you give them? That would depend if I was hiring them or if they were going somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, look, if they were looking to get into real estate, advice that I would probably give them is, is find the right fit. Yeah. You know, right go, go and talk to 10 principals before you come and ask for a job. Yeah, okay. Yeah. The environment is so key, isn't it's it? Key. Yeah, yeah. It's key. It make or break a career. Yeah. Yeah. Um, another one that you may or may not be able to answer. What's something we don't know about you? Probably, I'm a little bit of a political nerd. I'm oh. very much in, yeah. So, Australian um, politics? No, American politics. Oh, okay. Um, for whatever reason. I, um, right. Which kind of bleeds into... Aussie politics because we generally follow it, but for some reason I've, I've gotten right into that in the last couple of years. It's been very interesting. Some of the policies are okay. Okay, interesting. So, yeah. Right, we can debate that later. Okay. Jamie, it's been wonderful talking to you. Thanks Thank you very much. I appreciate today. it. Good Thanks. On you. Okay, interesting. So, yeah. Right, we can debate that later. Okay. Jamie, it's been wonderful talking to you. Thanks Thank you very much. Today. I appreciate it. Good Thanks. on you.